chapter. Keep on, keep on keeping on. Uh, Fred, I'm going to turn it over to you. Yes, indeed. We've now reached our favorite part of the evening. Would you please raise your hands and welcome to Kyle Kitzmiller. Hi, everyone. Hi. All right. So uh, what I'm curious, what song were you guys talking about when I logged on? What's the uh, what's the song that's popular in the Northeast that I may not know about over here in Indiana? We were singing Sweet Caroline. Oh, Sweet Caroline. OK. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, played at like every Red Sox that. game and stuff. So people up here everywhere oh, I know it. Yeah, I don't even much pay attention to baseball. Uh, <laughs> never. My dad was a huge Pirates fan uh, growing up, but he never really watched baseball when I was growing up. So I never, uh, never really got into <clears throat> watching much of anything. But uh, yeah, well, hi. Uh, so uh, I don't know. Let me let me learn a little bit about you guys. What's uh, what's going on in in uh, Maine? Where in Maine are you exactly? So we're a little bit. Uh, we're kind of all spread out, but we're in and around uh, Portland, Maine, um, okay. which, so so Maine itself is about, oh, what would you guys say, maybe 250 to 300 miles tall, and that's only about 40 to 45 miles from the southern border, so okay. it's, it's pretty, we're pretty much southern Maine. Gotcha. Um, okay, great. A couple of guys from New Hampshire, but otherwise, right, right around that area. Sure. Awesome, yeah, I did a, um, I did a judging weekend in, um, in the, uh, is it the sunrise the Atlantic mm. I was in uh Fredericksburg the capital of, of Fredericton uh, Brunswick. Fredericton thank you thank you <laughs> yeah. yeah capital of Brunswick and uh that was that was a fun weekend because um the earliest of us uh, Alan Lampson was was the contest administrator he drove but uh the other three of us the early of us earliest land was like 1 a.m uh the next morning uh, and uh, the latest one was like 4.30 in the morning and then the contest started at eight. <laughs> so that was that was quite the, the shocker, but um, it was also interesting on my way out, we went from uh, Fredericton to uh, Halifax and I have never been on a plane that wasn't uh, privately owned in my life. Uh, I think it had 16 seats on it and I could, took a picture of it like six in the morning. And I was like, I've never seen a plane quite this small, but that was, Certainly a lot of fun, especially since the uh, the pilot just turned around and told us the safety instructions instead of going on the intercom and things like that. So that was that was a new experience for me. And I think that I think they had two gates at that airport. So that was definitely a very memorable weekend. Um, is is Atlantic the right name for that division? No, I think you had it. I think you had it before with Sunrise. Sunrise. Um, okay. Yep. I we don't have divisions in Indiana, so uh, I, I get some of the the names from different districts that have divisions screwed up. So, okay, yeah, that was that was uh, that was definitely a very memorable weekend, and I and it was fun because we were done with the the judging and everything by like seven p.m. the next day, and I sat and watched hockey all night. And uh, I don't there's not a lot of hockey going on in Indianapolis, but uh, we do have a minor league team, but but I never really got much into it. But I just watched it all night, and I was like, man, this is. I feel like I'm doing the right Canadian thing here by, by uh, <laughs> watching hockey in, in uh, Fredericton. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, as it turns out, actually, um, tonight is, uh, is a time where I'm actually at my brother's tonight uh, for a very good reason. Because I actually, uh, I'm just going to pause uh, real quick. I'll be right back. Awesome. So, well, so while he's on pause there, um, I'll remind everybody if at some point I think Fred usually throws it over to like a Q&A type of thing. So if you do end up having any questions, now's a good time to write those down. Um, and it's also a good time to plug the fact that assuming they can work out the details and we're allowed across the border after COVID, uh, districts is actually going to be up north of the border. At least that's the current plan. Um, so well, what he was talking about about having fun up a Sunrise Division, people who come from Sunrise Division always talk about how that's the best contest convention that they ever go to because of how much fun it is. We're going to be able to get that for an entire district convention. Um, that's the idea they're going for. So if you can make that one, if we're allowed to go to Canada, uh, should be a blast. Okay, sorry, I'm back. All right. 
Uh, surprise. Hey. hey. It's rehearsal night. It's rehearsal night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to sing a tag real quick. What a boy. <laughs> was that was that in honor of the the fact that we're in the NED in uh, Boston Common or I was singing about that as yeah. we were singing. Yeah, I was too. We thought about it deeply. It, it's one of our <laughs> it, it's one of our favorite tags, and it's one of our favorite quartets. Um, my dad was a very very hardcore Boston Common um, listener when I was growing up, so it's deeply ingrained in my uh, barbershop background, and. Uh, yeah, we just we just always loved it, and that's that's always a fun tag to sing. But yeah, seriously, as, as we sang, what a poor. I went, ah, they're gonna love this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is yep. any Annie's gone away? Is that a Boston Common one too? Uh, I don't, I don't think they sang that. It's a, it, it's a great tag though. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> yeah, let's do one more. No more. I got yeah, I, I think I remember. And he's gone. And he's gone away. One more year. Yep, I got it. That's how I remember tags. And he's gone away. What more can I say? And he doesn't live. And he's gonna win. Yep. So I, I have a question. Are, yes. are you allowed to sing tags without having your gold medal around your neck? <laughs> What's the last time you think we wore those? Uh, yeah. 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 Well, like a couple of years. I it's, don't think I know where my. Yeah, this is now. pandemic. We, we <laughs> barely go to the grocery store, much less. Uh, although things are obviously getting better. Uh, the four of us are finally all vaccinated. Uh, I'll be through my two weeks uh, on Wednesday, and Colby through his two weeks on. Friday. Friday, and then these two guys are teachers, so they they got theirs a little yeah. bit earlier. So, no. uh, yeah, we uh, <laughs> yeah, we haven't worn metal in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we just uh, we just like singing with each other, and and uh, honestly, uh, tonight I don't know if if any of you hopped on Facebook in the last half an hour or so, but um, for those that don't know, we did a fundraiser for our Harmony Explosion Camp uh, last summer. And we raised uh, more than, than we really even imagined, but, but we raised like $10,200. Mm -hmm. And uh, we said, if you, if you, we have a certain like, like goals, you know, if you do 5,000, we'll do a, a virtual concert. If you do 7,500, we'll do a virtual concert and we'll wear costumes of the audience choice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and 10,000 was, we will release our Christmas album this year, which is a, a play on the, the thing that we did for, little skit we did for the AIC show last summer. Um, and we ended up doing just a five song uh, EP for, for Christmas because Theo was finishing up his doctorate and we couldn't just slam through 15 tracks. Oh, but, was but yeah, it's it gonna be a multi-year project. Yes. Um, but we still have the, the virtual concert to do it. And uh, the, the, the voters have, have made their voices heard and we are going to dress up as Mario characters. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna plan out when exactly that's gonna happen. And we'll put on a um, uh, Mario outfits, and we just we put on the hats that we just yeah. got in the mail, and uh, and sing some songs, play Mario Kart, you know. Yeah, yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna add another stream onto the end of it because I think that as fun as wearing costumes is, you know, you probably only have about four songs through. Like I don't really care about this anymore. The the costume <laughs> stick was fun, but uh, yeah. yeah. So so we're gonna actually do some more video gaming for those that that are interested in that kind of thing. And uh, it's not necessarily going to be fundraisers; it's just going to be uh, just just to have some fun. 
but yeah, we uh, we like to to stay silly. We like to keep singing with each other, and uh, we're we're best of friends. But most of all, we we just enjoy being silly <laughs> uh, with each other. And uh, yeah, there are times where we will get together for hours and hours. And we won't sing a note because we're just being friends more than anything mm -hmm. else. We're clarification. We're all friends except for Cole. Yeah. Yeah, they just but he did let here. me use his, his uh, computer here, so I don't want to yeah. harp on him too much. No, I'm just, I'm only here because I'm Kyle's brother. So, That's right. Yeah. I wish we had James. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we also like to rip each other a lot. Too. <laughs> uh, so, I think Colt, Chris might have said something, but he was muted. Oh, sorry. I can't tell. I think George. Oh, no, okay. say I was going to okay. say something. Cole has done some tracks for us, at least for my uh, quartet. So we've been in touch in the past. Ah, sorry. Uh, was sorry about that. It was, yeah. <laughs> it was Exchange thing, Street. So I, I, uh, it, I didn't quite get that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was Exchange Street. Yeah, yeah. And, I uh, and my, my wife is making me grow this out. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Uh, but, yeah, mine too. <laughs> no, these kids don't have any hair. No, Theo's the only one that can grow. <laughs> <laughs> so he does a lot of it. I can you guys remember my you guys my pandemic beard was nothing. Nothing. It was nothing. <laughs> I mean like it was <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was nothing. It's all right. Yep. If you looked at it a certain way in certain light, it still was nothing. It's <laughs> a great story, David. Yeah. Story. In case you're curious, uh, we we don't really stick to any topic. So if anybody has any questions, just feel free to jump right in and ask us because we're uh, well, we're likely well, to go in any direction. Kyle, when you had emailed me and said, is it okay if I bring some of my quartet with me? I thought you meant a young guy. Uh, so this is great. Since Surprise. <laughs> we have seen some songs and uh, I don't know about the rest of the crew, but when Ted was singing the tags, it wasn't really being picked up by the mic, which says to me, oh. Maybe you could try getting closer to the mic or further. I'm not sure which. Oh, I probably need to try. One of those, because I, I can hear you fine when you're speaking. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. Um, in the quartet was tough. But can we just try another tag? Yeah. One phrase. Probably real quick. closer. Uh, and see what the original sound um, was are probably you, the issue. Are you using that one? And it's no. On it's way. Just do that. What's being used? Hey. 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 better yeah okay yeah, yeah. it's the original sound thing yeah it's, it, it's better it starts off loud every time you take a pause and then quiets like it thinks you're overdriving and backs off the volume you can, you can, it's, if that it's, helps it's, zoom. it's not the mic it's the mic yeah zoom is like we expect you to be speaking ah there it is automatically adjust yeah. oh wait okay and let's try one more time Red. How was that? We turned down the automatically adjust volume, so that should be at least closer. It seems like it was about the same. I guess but, we should figure this out if we're going to do that concert. Yeah, but that's <laughs> not going to be through Zoom. That's going to be through Facebook. Oh, through yeah. Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, we got we got some learning to do, but we'll yeah, we'll, we'll do some more out. testing. This is kind of in, in uh, impromptu here, so. Yeah. Well, we're we're not going to complain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So what are some what are some like little little stories we could talk about? I want my coffee before I get. Sorry, stories. coffee. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, this is Cole's office, which is just for him, and there's like nowhere to sit, so everybody's standing by. Yeah. Him. Well, Kyle, you had mentioned a, a little story that I mean, you know, for all of us, I think barbershop is pretty important in our lives. I mean, you're taking the time out to during the pandemic to even get on and do this right now, mm -hmm. and um, well, quartet practice was so important to Kyle um, when we were <laughs> practicing that he, you know, I mean, you know, graduating from college is an important milestone. And it's, um, you know, it's something that you should be very proud of. And the achievement is, I mean, you know, certainly an in-person celebration. But, um, you know, we had scheduled a quartet rehearsal during uh, his graduation. And, well, 
I didn't we move saw, screen. Yeah. yeah, I didn't move rehearsal. We saw Kyle in rehearsal, man. <laughs> <laughs> we had we had stuff to do, so he got his. Yeah. Did you get your diploma in the mail? Or I think so. Yeah, yeah I mean that's usually what they do. Yeah. Um, um, well, actually, as I recall, when I graduated, um, they gave me an empty um something or other and i they they, they didn't have your they, diploma in there. the diploma wasn't in there wow. uh or maybe that was at high school because they wanted to like you know there were there were a lot of sketchy people at my high school they wanted to really make sure that you weren't going to do anything dumb okay during the ceremony <laughs> so they're like we're gonna give this to you after the ceremony so yeah. you can't run out and, you know Stop i don't on know it. yeah <laughs> I don't know, man. There were all kinds of rumors about all these things that were going to happen, and not a single dang one of them happened. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because they didn't give you the paper. Mm -hmm. That was the problem. Hmm. Well, I can tell you uh, just one quick thing. I mean, like, uh, before I even knew that society existed, um, I was recording myself. Um, I don't know if you guys know the free and easy chart, Good Old Summertime. Uh, but I had found that on Spepsquist's website, not even knowing that there was like a society or that there were contests or anything. Um, I just was like, oh, here's a barbershop website that's got some free music. And then I was a big old nerd and just recorded myself singing along, uh, you know, all four parts. Um, and it sounded pretty bad. It was pretty bad. I was, <laughs> I, I was not good at barbershop in high school, uh, but, you know. Something's never I did changed. what I could. Oh, I just noticed Chris is wearing the Super Mario's medley shirt, too. That's awesome. Oh, dude. Nice. Oh, yeah. yes. I don't know. He went off screen. Maybe he wasn't wearing it before, and he went and changed. I don't yeah. Know, but... <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. I wasn't gonna, but then the whole group was there. Just... Yeah, 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 yeah. One thing led to another. Yeah. I appreciate <laughs> the representation. That's yes, very nice. Yeah. Yep, and that video was shared today by a pretty uh, gaming bible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, gaming bible, which has six point six million followers on yeah. Facebook. So that was pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah, Cole spent. Uh, for those that don't know, Cole spent about nine months and three hundred and twenty some hours putting together this uh, what fifteen minute, thirteen minutes, eleven minute? and a half minutes of music. Eleven and a half minutes of music. Forty songs. Yeah, for, forty song medley of just different Mario songs. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you had the whole green screen and the everything. All. I mean, he does all that in this room right here. This little, what, 10 by 12 room? Uh, it's such a tiny room. Yeah, I would say like a... And I'm so hot. I'm dripping with sweat right yeah. now. I need <laughs> water. I'm sorry. Go get some water. I'm going to drink some coffee and keep getting hotter. Yeah, so I, I film everything in here, which is pretty fun. But yeah. I digress. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, yeah, that was a that was a lot of work. And I was like, are you ever going to get this out? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But I, I was definitely uh, around for some moral support throughout the process because I, I would never take on something like that myself um, because I'm not crazy. Yeah. And I'm also a dad, so that kind of changes things too. Uh, Theo and I are both dads, and uh, David is uh, expecting in uh, October. So that's that's pretty exciting. It's a kind of a new chapter in our lives, and, uh, and uh, I'm actually – expecting in four weeks <laughs> so uh yeah we're, we're expecting our second uh and uh we're gonna get a, a a second little girl and uh so that's pretty exciting so i don't know how many of these uh these kinds of things i might be on because i'll probably just be trying to sleep at any possible point uh but luckily i work at home uh, i have a, a web web design business so i i do that uh, day to day and i can i can watch over uh, my two and a half year old right now uh, and still find a way to balance everything but she's pretty good she watches sesame street as she likes to call it fascist street uh, because she hasn't <laughs> quite gotten there yet but she's starting to to speak real understandable words even if they're not uh intelligible yet uh or they're not uh they're not pronounced the right way uh, yeah so that's uh that's some stuff that's that's going on in our lives so, uh, yeah, and any other things that you guys are <laughs> thinking about, wondering about? Because we, we can just kind of ramble here, but um, what's... Our Chris, our director, he's uh, he and his wife are expecting their first child this winter. This winter? Okay. All winter. When is it? August. Oh, August. summer. No, not <laughs> that far away. Soon. Yeah, well, congratulations. They should Thank shoot you. for the 15th of August. Yeah, that's his birthday. That's what, they, the, that's what they should shoot for. Well, yeah. the official one's the 13th, so may, <laughs> it could happen. Hey, there you go. You might, you might <laughs> you, luck out. We never uh, know. Is this number one for you? Yep. 
Okay. Congratulations. Yeah, that's very exciting. Um, yeah, I think most reports say that it might come early, but that's all right. Yeah. Right. If it's not the 15th, I won't be mad. Okay. <laughs> right. You never exciting. know. It, it, I think it depends on the mamas as yeah. much as anything. Well, that's cool. Um, yeah, well, the con congratulations. Hope everything is as uh, uneventful as it can be, because you'll have plenty of other eventful things uh, <laughs> afterward. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, just sleep when you can. Sleep when you can. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah. Uh, sorry. Huh? I'm, I'm just rambling. Yeah, no, you're well, cool. I Actually, I had this, this awesome story that I'd like to share. Please do. Are you coming in? Yeah, we're going to come talk in here. Okay, so uh, okay. there was this time, uh, just strap in. Uh, we were, uh, when we were uh, about in 2012, we had our first flying gig. Was, oh, yes. First one was it 2013. 2012. It was 2012. First I wasn't, flying gig. I wasn't on that one. No, you were. No, this is South Dakota. Sioux, Sioux Falls, South oh, Dakota. Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Yeah. We went out there, and, and we were very excited because on the way, to the airport, we had all met up at uh, my brother's place. I was still in college. The other mm -hmm. two were up in Fort Wayne at that time, I think. Yep. Um, and we had all gotten quartet iPads. First ones we'd ever had. Yeah. All, yeah. all four of us got them. Doing what young people do. Spend all your uh, all your show money on electronics. Yeah. <laughs> and they were, um, they were the first ones with the retina displays, so they looked really nice. It was very exciting. We got all of our games downloaded. We all played playing it. our Blue, Bloons Tower Defense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, I was playing Fruit Ninja. Ninja. Yes. Okay. Fruit, Fruit Ninja. Uh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Fruit Ninja. So, oh, my gosh. And so we were, Temple Run? Yeah. yeah. That one? yeah. <laughs> so we were, we were on our way to oh, the, the airport, and we, and we downloaded all the games we played on the plane. And I think we had a connection somewhere because it's not there's not a direct flight to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So uh, I'm sure it was Sioux Chicago. Uh, but, yeah. And we got in there, we played, and we had a really nice host, and we'd gone to bed, and I, I stayed up until like 2 33 in the morning playing this jetpack game. Because we didn't have anything to worry about. We had a night, a, a show at night the next day. Yeah, right? we had yeah, a show at about new show. 7 o'clock, so we were expecting yeah, so to we're start like, yeah. doing stuff around, you know, 2 or 3, getting sort of prepped. And we woke up, and he made us this beautiful breakfast and all this, and we fed us, and he said, All right, you guys ready? It was about 9. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's it might have been. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. I forgot. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and uh, surprise, we had a surprise youth camp to run. <laughs> <laughs> so all we wanted to do, and and didn't mention this at all. No, no, no mention in any we, emails, we, communication. Yeah, we yeah. love doing those. To be clear, yeah. we yeah. love doing youth camps, but. We didn't we, know about we it. We plan our nights and not we don't stay up until three in the morning the night before. When yeah, we do. so so we <laughs> all we really wanted to do was just cozy up, drink some sodas, and play on our iPad. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we couldn't, so uh, <laughs> we had a, we had a surprise youth camp. That was our uh, first fun flying. Yeah. Show Luckily, I mean, like we can all read music reasonably well, right? Yeah. But like it, it was it was just your standard barbershop yeah. rep. I think we all know, like Coney yeah. Island or yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mary Lou. So I mean like it wasn't that big of a deal. But. David and I being educators, you know, we've, yeah. we've taught a lesson or two on the fly when necessary. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right, we're just gonna have to bust, you know, bust yeah. this one out. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 But, so that was fun. I mean it, it ended up going really well, but we definitely weren't ready for it. Just wanted to play on yeah. my iPad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a new toy. And if you remember, that was also the weekend of the uh, the Sweet Adeline's contest. That's right. We, we were going to watch the Rising Star contest. Oh, we did. Right. And you and yeah. I did, because Kyle and I were yeah. staying at the same place, and Dave yeah. and Cole stayed uh, That's right. somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, yeah. Tom Gannon. Was that, was that your right. host, right? Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, um, Sweet Adeline's, I have enjoyed since I've gotten, gotten into Barbershop. They do have that free webcast. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That was really nice when I was young, because I did have no money, nothing. So now I'm actually like, I don't know. Now I actually donate to it when I watch it. Now, but now it he's, was now he's yeah. rich because he's a teacher. I am yeah. just <laughs> so rich, guys. Like just that's how it happens with money. It's just man. Yeah. By the way, this is we like sarcasm yeah. in this quartet. This is neither here nor there, but today I had to dole out two dollars to students that I made a bet with these students to like get them to work hard. There's um. Uh, some Swahili language, and I was like, I bet him. I was like, I'll bet you can't learn this and say it perfectly to me in 24 hours. And two of my guys did, and so I gave them a dollar today. And then they're just, they're just, they're, they have personalities, man. And so they took the dollar, one of my students, and did this. And I was like, you, you can't do that with one dollar. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> 
it's not you can't a thing. Make it you, rain. Can't, you can't make it rain with money with one dollar. You can make so, it float. That's what yeah. you can do. So they took some paper towels and did it with that. Yeah. <laughs> this is my teaching style, everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little bit of bribery goes along. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, whatever works. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So have you? We uh. We started um. We started meeting in person as a chorus outside and masked. Uh, that was in, what was that like? I think it was uh, early April. Yeah, April. Hey, April. Yeah. Yep, yeah, April. some sometime in April. Uh, and then of course, since it's outside, we have to work around weather. So we had a couple weather issues, but uh, we've been able to meet five times, I believe, mm -hmm. yep. uh, as a chorus. And last night we met one more time, and and uh, it's been it's been really great because you know as much as you like to sing along with the learning track and, and things like that, there's nothing quite like getting together with with real people and excuse me and uh, yeah. being able to hear everything and and I think that a lot of us uh, forgot what it was like to uh, to sing too hard uh, I, I think that I've, I've noticed a pretty general trend of us not mm -hmm. trying to compete with each other as yeah. much mm -hmm. um, so uh, I don't know what you guys uh, are planning on doing uh, for getting together when that's gonna happen but um, yeah, it's. I'm. I'm hoping you guys feel the same thing we do, and, and you can just feel the ease of it, and hopefully, some things will uh, will uh, just uh, line up a little bit easier than they used to. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we we tend to be we tend to be glass half full kind of thinkers generally, you know. And despite how difficult this past year has been, you know, when we got back together, we went, well, look at the things that have improved because of the fact that. Do you want to like sit down or anything? No, I'm pretty okay. much short enough. I'm in the frame, oh, so that's it's fair. fine. I'm too tall. Um, but you know, it's I one. Seen <laughs> it's it's one of those things where you know, uh, the the working on their own and not and uh, and again, just almost needing to retrain yourself to to sing in a chorus. There are some things that are actually going really really well. Like we haven't flatted a song once, and yeah, that was a sharp. really habitual <laughs> problem for yeah. us. And, or a challenge for us, but it is for for so many choruses. But um, but we've literally just been going sharp the whole time, and yeah. there is there's a lot less heavy singing, and because of the social distancing, um, we were kind of exploring more space anyway, based on a University of Kansas study of choral singers with adding at least three feet of distance for self-monitoring purposes. This is way before COVID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Look so, how studious he is. He just finished up his coursework for his doctorate uh, yeah. in choral conducting. Well, so he has yeah. so many studies to talk about and, well, and such. Well, but I was I was obsessed with this before I got into grad school. I just <laughs> I, it was one of those things where it so exploring that extra space actually helps us to monitor, thank you. <laughs> monitor what we're doing with our own voice, which is exactly what you need to do cuz so, how many of do any of you in your chorus know the guy on the risers that likes to correct other people or have ever met that guy? And hopefully you're not. Or that have guy. been that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. That would be that's me. George. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's George. George, but, uh, George is like, no way. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, the, the best thing we can do is just focus on the only thing we have control over, which is ourselves. And giving that extra space actually helps us to think about what we're doing and feel that and hear ourselves a little bit better so there are some silver linings in all of this garbage year that we've experienced and mm -hmm. when we're coming back we're trying to use some of those experiences mm -hmm. to have actually benefited us in some ways and so we're finding some well, fruitful stuff in that way well, while you were meeting outdoors in april it's, it was still the middle of winter here yeah. but uh, <laughs> we're gonna yeah, they said they were in southern the, Maine. The board's uh, going to meet tomorrow Maine. night to talk about how we can get together in person uh, going forward. But I'd be interested, I'd, uh, I was interested in your comment that you sing with masks, and I was wondering how that worked out uh, and, and whether, I mean, when I have tried to sing with a mask just by myself, I've not enjoyed the experience very much. Yeah, I wouldn't and, say it's enjoyable uh, really for anybody, but I do think that the, uh, the big big round singer's masks that kind of look like duck bills. Uh, they give you a lot of room uh, to be able to breathe in and out much more naturally rather than feeling like you're just breathing from a, uh, a hair dryer where everything's hot. Um, so I think that that we had a 
somebody order a bunch for whoever wanted yeah. them and, and uh, we, we yeah. paid for them. So I think probably what 60% of us had those. Mm-hmm. A lot of our yeah. guys have yeah. the singer's mask. I don't like them personally. Um, I prefer just kind of like a normal mask that has some just naturally some more room. It's not as, I mm-hmm. guess, close around the cheeks. Um, yeah. My yeah. mother-in-law, I was lucky, I guess. My mother-in-law sews and kind of made a large mask for me that I've been using because I've been teaching in person throughout the pandemic. Our uh, our school's been open, so yeah. Uh, I've been Did singing. your school close last spring, though? Yeah, it closed yeah, in, the spring, in the spring. Forgive me. I mean, like we yeah. we came back late July. Um, yeah, and honestly, it, the the experience varies from singer to singer, and it varies from mask to mask. You know, and obviously, the there are you know some of the uh, the studies that say that the N95 masks are the most effective, and that doesn't mean all the other masks are ineffective necessarily, but they may be less effective. But, you know, I find that the N95 masks, for me personally, are really difficult to sing in because mm-hmm. it's like, it feels like there's a plunger on my face, whereas yeah. if I use <laughs> kind of a normal cloth mask, it, it's still effective, but I feel like I can actually breathe, um, or some of the disposable ones. So. Um, you know, the main thing I think more than anything is having that distance there. But now that we're in such an interesting time of transition where it feels like we're finally transitioning out of all of these regulations and everything, I think it really comes down to, um, I think it comes down to comfort level of, you know, of the collective, you know. And so I think for us, what our, what we're going to do, we have a board meeting tomorrow. No, is today Monday? Yeah, it's Monday. Monday. We, we have a board meeting on Wednesday to talk about what's what Circle City Sound's official position will be regarding the mask recommendation. And uh, a lot of that's gonna be driven by membership feedback, you know, because there is gonna be there are gonna be some courses that feel really comfortable that want to get back inside and want to just go maskless and get, right. And if everyone is on board with that, and great. Like at this point it really is it really should be based on making those decisions based on member feedback. But Mm -hmm. there are some courses that probably are still feeling pretty apprehensive. And so they're going to be more cautious. And so I think the best way for leadership to proceed in any capacity is simply Mm -hmm. to get the feedback from the membership and see what the majority of the folks feel and then make an informed decision from that point. Um, Luckily, our president is an engineer. So data-driven decisions is something that he uh, he feels uh, internally. Yeah. (laughs) So, so do you currently require that everyone wear a mask or is it so uh, we, up to the we, have, we have required the we have required everyone to wear a mask until well until yesterday until the CDC made a different recommendation um, and so we we and what was interesting was we actually didn't have a board meeting before um, our rehearsal yesterday because we normally rehearse Sundays and mm-hmm. everyone was just feeling really excited. It was our awards night. You know, there were really a lot of small pockets of people getting together outside, just talking face to face. And so when we finally got uh, to the amphitheater where we sing, we said the only thing we're going to actually require is that you're just really standing your distance. Right. But based on the new uh, <clears throat> recommendation from the CDC about non or vaccinated people being able to take off their mask and feel safe about that. We said for this, we're going to leave it up to you. Our recommendation will be to wear a mask while you're out here, but whatever you're comfortable with is what we're going to go with for today. So just keeping it in that, you know, that was where that was where we landed. And then Wednesday, we'll have a better idea of what we're going to be uh, requiring of folks moving forward. Yeah. And when we move inside versus outside and that kind of thing. I know one thing that has happened to me over the years or 30 years of singing barbershop in the chorus is that if one person walks in and he's got a cold and now that we know if we wear a mask it will protect us my feeling is if you want to come to practice wear a mask you've got the cold and it stops i mean the flu has disappeared i you know it's since i've been wearing it yeah. cold cover hasn't disappeared but flus have disappeared as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. I mean, every, every time school would start up. I'd, well, people are washing their hands more too. Yeah. It'll be, it'll just, be a, just a thought. So from yeah. here on out, if you want to come to practice and, and listen or, or even sing, wear your mask if you got yeah. a cold. 
Mm -hmm. That's that's one of those things that that may be one of the things that is like changed after the pandemic, like from a cultural standpoint, not from a mandate standpoint. Uh, a lot of other countries, that's just the norm. When someone is sick, they just wear a mask to protect others around them. And so that may be something that you see continue, um, you know, in our American culture after all of this. So it's that's, you know, that's going to really resonate with some people. And of course, with some other folks, it may not. But, um, you know, it's it's just so bizarre what becomes politicized these days. You know, it's yeah. like it really shouldn't be anything about that, but just, you know, whatever folks are comfortable with and whatever they perceive to be as a courteous gesture. I know for me, that's something I'm probably going to continue doing. Like, like you said, I think that's a great recommendation, Dwight, mm -hmm. but I'll, it'll be interesting to see, you know, American perception moving forward about, you know, uh, how do we, how do we handle common colds later on, you know, and that, that kind of thing. Well, and I think that, you know, unless, uh, unless you went to the dentist's office or went in <laughs> surgery, you didn't see very much at all. And now they're selling, uh, they, they're available in a lot more places. Yeah. And obviously you have people making custom ones or whatnot. And if you want to dress up like a ninja, maybe, you know, you can have a cooler one. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you're sick, you can show it off and, and look really awesome or, or something. But I think that, that the, uh, the long-term effect will be uh, probably less transmission when we're sick. Um, because I think a, a lot more people will, will take that uh, possibility to, to just try and not, you know, because I imagine even if you are sick, if you wear it, um, you probably still recover faster. That big coal mask, did you watch the show that the Christmas show by the vocal majority, they had that and they had, had that big coal mask mm -hmm. and it sounded, sounded like the vocal majority. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it did very nice. It was very, it was a great show. Yeah. Yeah. For Some, sure. Something that was really interesting, all I'm happy to share was, um, so I'm, I'm going into a position this fall and the uh, director of choral activities for a small uh, private university, Anderson University in Indiana. And we went to, uh, they had one final concert on May 2nd. It was a Sunday. Um, and having talked to their director, basically they had decided, um, because a lot of sports teams nowadays are, you know, they're doing a lot of the rapid testing. And now that the vaccine is out, you know, they're just kind of making some of these team policies to say, you need to get vaccinated. And then the week before the game, you get a test and it comes back negative. And then we're just going to play like normal, no masks, no anything, blah, blah, blah. And so the director of the, at the time, he said, we're going to do that, the same thing for the choir, because, you know, this is our organization. And they kind of, they gauged it. They said, everyone, you know, we're going to recommend that you get a vaccine and then we'll do a test the week before. And then we're just going to, and they sang on the risers close together, like a normal choir, no masks. I tell you, it was the most glorious thing to hear that again. It was really, I mean, I was crying, you know, just like sobbing yeah. and like as a mess in the back, but you know, it was really beautiful, but also it's, you know, depending on the, again, it all has to do with what's the makeup of that chorus, what's the comfort level of that organization and what, you know, it, it needs to be an agreement, right? It needs to be an agreement that everyone feels comfortable with. And I think there was one, there, there were maybe a few folks who just didn't feel comfortable getting the vaccine, but there were enough that the data showed that it was still going to be okay. And so it, it's, it turned out to be a really great concert, so... Mm -hmm. It sounds like we're all we're all ready to partake in oh, yeah. when, when we get the chance. Yeah. Um, does your chorus have any uh, shows scheduled? Are you going to try to do any? Uh, we have, yeah, we have. Um, every year we have an arts fair uh, that happens in Indianapolis. That we are doing yep. that, right? Yep, we've yeah. got one in August for a chapel. Right. Um, it's called the Chapel Hill. It's like a church guest artist series mm -hmm. that we're going to come in for. It's kind of a uh, parking lot concert for that one. So that's going to be outdoors. Yeah, the, the same thing with the, the arts fair is, is also outdoors. Yep. They have an outdoor stage and stuff and with plenty of room to social distance and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we, we haven't talked about our typical Veterans Day program in November. Yeah. But right now we're still in communication with our um, Christmas show uh, venue. And our, our plans are to have a Christmas, a, a conventional Christmas show um, this December. Um, so at kind of at a cabaret. So we'll, that, that is our plan right now, but our, our next performance is in August. Yep. 
and that gives us enough time to uh, to to sing with each other and prepare the the repertoire well enough. And you know, I imagine for the next six months or so, everyone's going to be like, you know what? I'm just glad to hear it, and uh, we don't have to worry about getting everything exactly the way we want it. We yeah. just have to, <clears throat> you know, have it have it in, in good enough shape. But but I think we'll get a lot of uh, of uh, understanding from our audience yeah, too. Yeah. Uh, but well, and it'll it, certainly be nice to see. Yeah, I think I think too that, I mean, that concert that I heard on the second of May. I mean, it was. I'm sure there were imperfections, but boy, I didn't hear them. I was just so glad to hear that sound again. It was yeah. like, man, I, I don't care if someone's going flat. That was that's just yeah. it's great to hear that. So he's also the nicest guy in the world. So I'm also yeah. picky with my chorus guys. So I, you know, I will say. They, they need to sing in tune. All right, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I need more coffee. Yeah. Hey, could you give me some more coffee? Yes, sir. Just, just a dollop, just a of, dollop of uh, of uh, the heavy whipping cream. Mm. My brother doesn't carry half and half, so we do heavy whipping cream, but I like less. So. Anyway, um, yeah. So that's this is kind of a a, a lightning round. Sorry that we can't keep uh, a straight topic for any reason, but we just kind of talk about stuff. Uh, so, um, take the topic again on you. Um, I'm sorry, you guys went from eighth oh. place to, to gold medal in one year, which has, I think, has not been done before, uh, or at least it, if it has, it's been very rare. What did you, how did you work during that year, and to what do you, you attribute the fact that you advanced so much more than all the other? top 10 quartets who were presumably also working their butts off during that yeah. year? Um, well, uh, in, in 2014, we uh, we didn't know exactly where we were going to land. We just knew we made it in the 10 and, and uh, we'll, we'll sing the other two songs. <laughs> but we didn't necessarily prepare like a uh, like someone who planned to make it to, to sing six songs. Um, so I think that there was there was a different kind of preparation um with with having done that the year before uh to where we we prepared them them differently and i think that the other big part of it is uh that in our district was forefront who had just gotten second the year before and uh we always had a, a healthy um competitive nature between the two of us uh between two quartets you know just we i've known kevin and aaron hughes since i was like eight i want to say so uh, we, we've always known each other uh, really well, and they obviously were singing well. And, and I think that it was a positive, <clears throat> it was a positive uh, uh, experience to be able to, to sing against them and, and compete with them and, and push them as much as they were pushing us. And, uh, you know, truth be told, we had, um, we uh, only ever beat their score on two songs uh and it was in the finals <laughs> so you know if you look at the uh, in, including uh, other mic testing sets we did some mic testing sets in cardinal and both got scored and they out beat, they beat us out on those too so you know uh it, it was it was the right uh mentality and the right level of preparation at the right time uh and i think that the the big thing that we learned is there's there's a, a level of freeing uh, mental space that you can give yourself when you get close to um, a big performance of any sort, much less a contest. And I think that our focus on that, especially the last six weeks or so, uh, was about getting in the right headspace so that way we didn't have to uh, think about really uh, much of, of the plan of the song and rather the spirit of the song. So we spent a lot of energy focusing on on how to get in that that head space, that heart space, and uh, you know, I give Theo a little bit of a hard time for being such a nice guy that he would never tell anybody that they're flat. And it, 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 you know, that's a joke, obviously. But uh, the real the real truth is he's he's always been uh, one of the most heartfelt people I know. Uh, and if you if you've ever talked to him for five minutes, you would know what I'm talking about. Uh, and he's, he's just one of the, the nicest people. And he also really cares about the, um, uh, the connection to people, both <clears throat> in person talking to people as much as 
as across the footlights and, and trying to perform. So uh, that was a good starting point, but Theo will tell you um, that one of his uh, and one of his personality traits is that he um, he is is very hard on himself. Uh, he he definitely uh, tries to to be everything uh, to the people that count on him, and he worries that he may not be able to do that. And and he gets in his head for that reason because he worries about uh, not being good enough in his eyes. And you know, no one else hears that. <laughs> That's a him thing, uh, but. Um, if if we could get him to not focus on on being hard on himself, since no one else is here, I'll put this back at a regular height. Um, since trying trying to get him to not worry about being so hard on himself, um, and let him spend his time focusing on connecting to people, uh, we were able to use that as a, as a strong guide, uh, as as a quartet and and getting us to not focus. I mean, I'm. I'm very, very much focused on on what the group is feeling, you know, what's our anxiety level on stage and things like that. And when I feel something, then I start wondering what's wrong. Can I fix it? And the truth is, you can never hear something in the moment and fix it. It's just not possible. <laughs> I mean, you can. It, it might be possible, uh, but you're going to probably sacrifice your own uh, mental space that you're living in. Uh, for the best performance. So uh, I had to turn that part of myself off. I needed to not have to monitor uh, the whole quartet. And, uh, and I think Dave and, and, and Theo are similar in that they, they see everything that they're not doing uh, versus uh, everything that they are doing. And and Cole has probably been always the best at, at just letting go of whatever's in his head and, um, and uh, just letting the performance drive him. And one thing that I, I have to give my dad, uh, he was our, our main coach, especially during the week uh, working with us. Uh, one thing that, that he did for us, among anything else, was, um, was really get us into that spot to remove those distractions and whatever was on our, on our minds and get us, you know, thinking, feeling, being, have the same energy, uh, all that same kind of stuff. And... Um, that was something that uh, from round to round got better. The first round was was pretty darn good. Uh, and and the, the last round uh, actually got past pretty darn good uh, because of what he did, especially. He got us into that zone and we were in there. I mean, it wasn't like we got there 30 minutes before we got on stage. I mean, we were in there like 4 p.m. and we sang at 8 Kind of thing like we just lived there the whole day when we were getting dressed all that kind of stuff i mean it was it was a whole like like life mindset uh that he put us in it, it was it was really it took a lot of energy to live there and you have to to not have to worry about the other people in your life not worry about what's going on with the rest of your family you know you just you have one job to do and you really focus in on that and and I think that if if I had to give us um, give give that experience uh, and compare that to probably the other competitors, I think that we lived there in that zone the best. And the best performers, the best actors that you've ever seen, uh, they they find a way to do that day in and day out. You know, you think of of um, you know the iconic performances of of um, Marlon Brando or. Jack Nicholson or uh, Anthony Hopkins, like they they find that zone and they become uh, a new character. They 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 live in that zone. It, it it just lives through them. Robert De Niro, you know they they just they have that that level of hyper focus. And I'm sure that there have been moments that all of us can recall upon. You know I I speak about this because I've lived it. You know. Uh, a handful of times, you know, I haven't done it like, like, you know, those um, A plus list actors have. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's something that, that I was, we, we were able to all dabble in at, at a reasonably similar level at the same time. And I, I think it was, you know, not to be cliche, but it, it kind of, everything just lined up the right way at the right time. And, um, the other thing that we did was, uh, you know, when we got eighth the year before, we were um, 
we we were just excited to be able to sing some rooms and and you know just hang out because the contest was over we didn't have to like worry about anything and, and my dad was like you need to learn about this vowel chart and he took us through uh in the lobby you know outside i think it was the uh, the ambassadors of harmony room uh before we went on he was like you need to drill this vowel chart blah blah blah, blah. I'm like dad we don't want to do this we just want to hang out it's saturday night at international we just want to say no 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 this needs to be your job for the next year. <laughs> so we did a lot of sound work and and uh, and tried to figure out our um, our vowel philosophy and and uh, how the the resonance matches up um, from different formats and things like that. Uh, science that I understand the process of, I don't necessarily understand the numbers of as well. Uh, but I know Theo. Uh, some of you might have seen that Theo put on a uh, a. Um, a lecture recital, that's the word I want, a lecture recital over, over some of the science of that um, as part of his doctorate program. And uh, his dissertation may also end up being over that. Uh, he hasn't uh, finalized that yet, but uh, that kind of sound philosophy and how that relates to, to choral music in general, uh, which, but certainly barbershop, uh, was something that, that we spent a good amount of effort on. And um, yeah, that's a, that's a long answer to a short question, but I, I hope that, that that all made sense. I, I kind of meandered a little bit, but uh, if, if there's anything you want clarification on, please feel free to ask. About science of the sound and the matching of the resonances. In the I, th I think you're cutting out, Fred. Can you say that one more time? No. Uh, how, how did you work? How did you work on that science of the sound and the matching? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we have a. Um, Cole has it on here. On his computer, I, I have it on my computer, but uh, there's a basically there are four uh, vowel families, uh, uh, which are, you know, I, I I hesitate to use the terms bright and dark because it has so many um, different definitions in people's minds but but basically um there there are two formats that that each vowel will um automatically resonate to and uh, the basically the the hey theo <clears throat> hey kyle right. do you do you want a visual on it i can share my screen i have the chart oh do you have it yeah that'd be yeah. great yeah i'll yeah, share that right you. now give me a sec yeah thanks uh, I need your help with some of the. Yeah. the Chris, I have it too. If you if you can't chart. find it, I got, I got it on my on my screen here. I just got to share it. Yeah, we've actually been using this. Um, oh, excellent. Probably more okay. in some of our quartets, but Chris is. We've been doing some of it in in the chorus as well. Okay, great. Um, and hopefully, when we get together live, I'll be able to do a little bit more of that because it's really yeah. hard to do. It's hard to do over Zoom. <laughs> oh yeah, certainly. It's it's certainly an experiential uh, thing. Yeah, perfect. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So these these complementary vowels. That's that's exactly uh, a different <laughs> a different set of words there. But um, I was trying to, to say that that these vowel families, like the the, do you use bright and dark for these vowels? What what are the terms you use? Um, I well I, I use I typically well with the chorus. Yeah, I I talk about kind of lighter or darker vowels okay. or or rather br like brighter and brighter and rounder so like the, top, the upper side is brighter the the bottom side is okay. rounder because um, i know we're kind of getting away from using bright and dark as terms because that's mm -hmm. everyone feels what that is different so we're trying yeah. to come up with some more objective terms well, yeah yeah it's it's one of those things where you know the the charting of this vowel i the, the best way i can describe it in like a quick elevator talk is basically that vowels our perception of vowel is based on two different pitches. So when I say the vowel ah, um, obviously I have the pitch of ah, ah, like that's a pitch. Uh, but actually, one pitch coming out of our mouth is actually way more complex than it's. A, it's a combination of many frequencies, and two of those pitches, two of those frequencies, are how we determine what vowel we're we're singing. And so when we actually are lining up the vowels, 
it has to do with lining up those frequencies in in the overtone mm -hmm. series. So, um, and, that, and basically, the further uh, north you go on this chart, uh, the more the the higher of those two frequencies is is emphasized. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Uh, yes. For for this way, for X Y. Yeah. Sorry for for the Y axis. Yeah, the Y axis. Going bot bottom to top is yeah. the higher the frequency of four minutes two, I think. Mm -hmm. And then, but you actually have to go from right to left to go zero to one for the other, uh, for the X axis. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Yep. So that's uh that's basically the idea is uh is that. Oh, okay. I never thought about it like that. Yeah, I mean, my science has been wrong. I'm that's, sorry. That's, <laughs> the, that's the that's the why of why the vowel chart exists. That's that's why these vowels are all paired together and everything. So, what's why? So why we have vowel families? So you look at the vertical, right? Last, light, lost, let, love, low, live, learn, look, and lease and loose, right? Those are all families. Those are all part of the same family because they have similar first formants. So again, our vowel, our perception of vowel is based on two different pitches or frequencies in our voice. So basically, when we say last, light, and lost, yeah, light, light to me is a little bit different because we're also from the Midwest, but I think more last, last. lost instead of light, lost. Last, lost, long is are the ones that we use, but um, but basically the second formant is changing with all those, but the first stays the same, which is why mm -hmm. they're related, which is why you can try to, which is why you can do the vowel modification and it still sounds like the vowel, right? So instead of last, you go last, 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 lost, long. So. Um, well, that's why the vowel families exist. It all has to do with that first frequency that is universal within that family. Mm -hmm. And then that changes when you go to the next one, let, love, low. Are, mm -hmm. All of them are different second frequencies, but they're all, all their first frequencies are pretty similar yeah. or within the same range. Yeah, I just, I suggested on here uh, that, that I, I like to use the, the um, for that second family, um, net nut and no uh because i think the word love it itself has a lot of different um interpretations of how that one is said yeah uh, a lot of people sing love uh love. yeah and uh, people people uh, from west virginia where my family's from they'd say love yeah you know and that's so you have a lot of different um connotations of what that particular word is but nobody says nut yeah they say nut net. it's a nut yeah and, and, and it's not a knot. The it's other, a nut. Th yeah. The other thing that's I think it's really important to think about this is that none of these vowels are fixed points on this graph. Mm -hmm. Vowel locations are not specific addresses; they are zip codes, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why, in different accents, we can still understand language, even though I'm from Michigan and Kyle's original family is from West Virginia, mm -hmm. right? We can have different dialects, but talk. English and still understand each other because his let is different from my let, but we can, they're still within the same zip code that we can still understand based on where those frequencies are. And actually, love, the a uh vowel, has the largest zip code of all of the vowels. Yeah. So it has the widest variance of, and so when we use this method, when we try to kind of center all the vowels towards that center line, you know, what we're doing is just trying to get the zip codes closer together. So it doesn't have, a lot of people feel really paralyzed when they work with this vowel chart. And I know some of you are probably like, I wish you would stop talking because I don't, uh, <laughs> you know, <'cause laughs> we're starting to get really into the weeds. But, yeah, yeah. But, you know, the point is that it really is more of a slight modification than it is a specific point. So you can actually experiment with those without feeling like I I'll just never get it right. You're actually probably doing it really, really well. It's not about finding the right answer. It's about finding a better answer. Yeah. I mean, if you look at a, at a color chart, there's a large area where red is. There's a large area where green is. You just need to be in one of those areas where you can identify it as green. It's probably the same exact yep. idea. Yep. So. Yep. Anyway.
I think we've uh, we've rambled for about an hour now. <laughs> so, uh, any other uh, any other thoughts or questions uh, before we before we sign off here? All right. Hearing Great. no questions, thank you, Kyle, and and thank Instant Classic. We didn't realize yeah. we we're going to get the whole shebang. That that's fabulous <laughs> for us. You guys, yeah. are fabulous and. Uh, uh, Theo, I don't know if you remember, but my quartet had you at Harmony University, Port City I do. Town. I quite do. quite yes. a few years ago now, back to pre pandemic days, uh, which we remember fondly. How yes. long ago was that? <laughs> Feels like forever ago. Yeah. Yes, I remember. I hope, I hope to work with you guys again soon. 2015, I think, or thereabouts. Yeah. Yep. Well, thanks again. You guys are fabulous. Uh, you're welcome to hang around for our business meeting, and sometimes we do a little <laughs> virtual beer o'clock afterwards. Um, yeah, well, we we probably should get to actually rehearsing at this point, but uh, we were glad that we could uh, we could all hang out for a little bit, and obviously people were in and out. I tried to make sure I was here the whole time since I was the <laughs> special invited guest here, but uh, but but thank you to the yeah. rest of the guys for for hopping in a little bit. But thank you so much. Okay. Man. Well, Fun thanks for having us, and and uh, we're glad we could see you, and hopefully you guys will be back singing together in person soon. Everybody, give me a hand wave. All right, have a good night, gentlemen. Okay, before I speak, does anyone?